welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. So today we're super excited because we are part of the Alta New Instagram hop. And so today this is one of their first Instagram hops. So after you're done with this video, you'll want to hop to uh, at the Hedgehog Hollow on Instagram or instagram.com slash Hedgehog Hollow. We'll pop a link in the description for you. Um, but what you're gonna do is hop to uh, our Instagram and then you're gonna keep hopping through. There's lots of prizes to win and there's some amazing inspiration on the hop as well. We did get a sneak peek of what other people are doing too. Um, but today what I do is we had to choose our favorite floral stamp. Now, that's almost like asking you to choose your favorite child. When it comes to ultra new floral stamps, I went with the Wonderland stamp set. I really like this one. It's one of their newer ones. Um, it just has a really fun style to it. It's got some great sentiments in it too. Um, and I chose this one because really what I want to focus on today is a great technique. We're gonna be taking their alcohol marker refills. I'm gonna be showing you how to paint with them because I thought it was a fun technique that's a little bit different. And so I'm gonna be giving you some of my favorite tips, tricks, techniques, you know, all of those fun things that we'll be doing in today's video. So when I start painting with alcohol inks, you do have a few uh, different options. Again, you can choose whatever your favorite paper preference is. And I decided to go with the glossy cardstock. So if you haven't painted with alcohol inks before, if you work on UPO, they're a little bit more um, free flowing and things like that. But if you go with the glossy alcohol ink cardstock, as always, links in the video description for you. It is a little bit, I think, easier to control. Um, but you can kind of play around with what your favorites are. So I'm using that. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is take our Wonderland stamp set. And I like using the Ultra New pouches. Again, I'll make sure these are linked up for you. And the reason I use them is in the newer Ultra New stamp sets, I'll get this one out for you, she says, is that they fold open. You see here how they fold open. So it gives you some card fronts that you can just mount up and use, which I think is really nice. It gives you some pairing options and then it gives you some inspiration as well, including the inks they use, the items you'd need to make that card. So I really like the fact there's a QR code that you can go to for more inspiration. Um, but I just really like the fact that you have all of these options in the newer um, kind of backers. So I don't normally keep my backers for my stamps, but the ultra new ones are ones that I do like to keep. So I like buying their pouches. They have this zip piece on the top and then I can keep my stamps in them too. So let's take our backing piece off that we'll want afterwards. And I'm just gonna do a very clean and simple card. I'm gonna use this one big flower on here and we're gonna use our Misty. So if you haven't watched a Hedgehog Hollow video before because maybe you're hopping and you're new, uh, welcome. I'm using Sticky Grid inside of my Misty and you can find out more of that video or maybe you have a Tim Holtz platform, we have videos on that too. You can check that out in the top right hand corner. So I'm actually going to do it slightly off my page. I'm gonna go up here. Now I do have a video on how to use it on larger pieces too. I'm not gonna worry about that today um, because we just want to get going with our piece here. So I'm just gonna kind of dominate my piece really with this, but that's fine. So I'm gonna do that. And I'm using the Gina K Amalgam. Now, Alton, you do do a black ink, which is really nice. And it is designed to work with their alcohol markers, but um, I just like the Gina K. For me, it's foolproof. It works all the time. And I'm all about using things that I love. So that's my favorite ink, I use it all the time. And I'm just gonna go over here, give it a nice press down. Make sure it inked up nicely. I'm gonna do it a second time. And the other thing I'm gonna do is heat set this because glossy cardstock uh, does have a reputation for working well with alcohol inks which would lead you to think that it's a non-porous surface. Actually, it's incredibly porous. And yes, I did stamp on my sticky grid. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really affect your sticky grid so much. Um, but you can see that I have a really pretty flower and then I can stamp my sentiment afterwards or do whatever we want to do, but I haven't exactly decided yet. And I'll clean my stamp after. So we'll just pop that to the side. So I'm gonna heat set this. I'm gonna grab down to my Ranger heat tool. I'm just gonna give it a heat set because I don't want it to run when I start putting my alcohol inks on. So I want to make sure that it's nice and dry. And this is gonna be a bit more free flowing. You can do it where you really keep within the lines. If you want to do that, I suggest heat embossing because that will give you some raised areas and it helps you keep the ink within um, your flower. For this, I'm gonna go with more of a watercolory look, but with alcohol inks. 
um, a bit more free form so I'm not going to worry about it so much but you can do that too so if you want to try that I suggest going with heat embossing for that fact and give it a nice heat set just to make sure that we don't get any runs and I'm just going to touch with my finger make sure it doesn't smudge on me yeah we look good okay so I have the Ulta New refills here. So I grabbed some pinks and I also grabbed myself some purples. I haven't exactly decided what I want to do. I'm kind of indecisive this morning. But what I also did, because I pre-trimmed my glossy cardstock to the size that I need, which is three and three quarters by five inches. I had these little strips. I'm working on my Tim Holtz glass mat because this works really well with this technique and I have this palette area over here. So I don't have the easy clean mat on it. Um, but what I do do is I put this strip here, so now I can put my inks out and so I'm going to put out a dot of the blush or a couple of dots of blush. Um, now they are going to dry because they dry on non-porous surfaces. I have the frosty pink. And the other thing that I wanted to do is I put a dot onto my glossy cardstock. And I kind of alternate because they do spread just like this. And what it does is it kind of gives me the, you know, little bit of a swatch sheet as I'm going. So I know what color I'm going to want to use in what place. And then I can just put a dot up here. Okay, so that's what that one looks like. Uh, so that was the cotton candy. And then, oops, I've got a bit more than I wanted of that one. This one is the coral berry. So they're my shades. These are the Ranger paint brushes for alcohol ink. So when you're uh, painting with alcohol inks, I do recommend keeping paint brushes just for your alcohol inks and not mixing them. I'm also going to use a couple of drops of alcohol blending solution. Just like this. And what I like to do is I do like to put, and again, you can play around with different techniques. But I'm just going to put a little bit and you'll see that it does react a little bit with your ink. And there is no real ink that's not going to react with blending solutions. So I just kind of have to accept that to a degree. Um, unless you do heat embossing. But it's just going to kind of give me a little bit of a smoky effect. And also this can be really fun because you could just do kind of an ombre or a, like a monochromatic look. But I'm not too worried about that so much. I'm gonna, Again, I'm just going to give it a little bit of a dry. It just gives me a little bit of foundation and it starts to saturate my paper a little bit. Okay, so let's go in with our lightest color. So I'm going to take some of this is the blush and I'm going to start putting some in. And so this is my lightest color. And actually I kind of like the black in there because it starts to give me some depth and some shadows. And again, it just depends on the effect that you're going for. So I'm quite heavy handed with my first color because again, it's a bit like painting, you know, you're putting that first color down. And you can see the control that I get with my first color. Now, if you say, if you don't want your colors to run, I knew that my um, amalgam is going to react a little bit, but that's fine because I like the effect that I get. Um, if you don't want that, then heat emboss. Heat emboss, you will not get any reactions at all. But I want that kind of smoky, watercolory, and you'll see how it all kind of comes together in the end. So I'm just going over this. But amalgam for me is a, an ink that I really like. You could also use some of the no line coloring inks. You can use your dye inks from Alton U2, they work well. Um, I mean, there's just lots and lots of different options. But play around with the inks that you like. But I think when this is finished, you'll like the effect that I'm going to get from this. Okay. You can see how I'm starting to get this to come together. Now I'm going to go in with some slightly darker effects. And I'm going to grab a little bit of blending solution onto my piece here. I'm going to go in, I'm just going to start grabbing some darker colour in here. So this is my frosty pink. 
And you only really need to work with a droplet at a time. And you can do this with any alcohol inks. I'm just using my Ulta News because we're on an Ulta New Hop and I wanted to show you a different way that you can use your marker refills. And so then I can go in with something even darker. I'm also going to go in a little bit at these tops here. I'm going to pull some of this colour down. I'm really using quite a dry brush technique and what you're going to see is that gives me some really nice kind of depth and things onto this. And then I'm going to go back to my blush. And again, alcohol reacts with alcohol a bit like when you use watercolours that, you know, water reacts with water. So that's going to reactivate a little bit this colour and allow me to pull these colours together. So again, I'm just kind of going for a little bit more of a free, fun technique. As I say, if you worked on Yupo, they all they move even more. So I really like kind of how my flower looks, very loose, very fun. Um, you can then decide, do you want to do blue around it? Do you want to just leave it? Now I have an entire box of all the different colors, which I did keep down here. Um, so that I can grab other colours. I'm going to go with a little bit of a light green. Um, so they come in these boxes and then you can decide what you want to do. I'm going to go with uh, the frayed leaf. So they coordinate perfectly. Of course, they refill the markers, but they coordinate perfectly with all of their inks as well. This is how they come. So I've kept them in the boxes until I'm ready to use them. So I'm going to use this frayed leaf. And I do have extra sets of my alcohol brushes. Obviously, I did not think that I wanted to use a stalk. But when you get it from Ranger, they sell these tool sets. They have three paint brushes in and they have a mini mister. Just a caution, do not fill the mini mister with a blending solution. I have done that. Lots of people shouted at me. Um, there is a resin in it that Ranger do not suggest you want to inhale. So I'm being a bit looser on my stem just because it went out. So I'm just going to pretend that, that that's how I wanted it to look, even though it kind of wasn't, but we're going to pretend that it was. And so I'm also going to go a little bit looser around my flower too. Um, let's grab one out of here. I'm going to go thicker. I'm going to get a bit more blush out as well, just so that I can tie everything together. So this is the thing. I wasn't intending to go loose on my stem because I'd gone quite tight on my flower. So now what I want to do is I want to just make it look like my flower was a little bit looser. So I'm just going to kind of go around the edges of my flower with some of that blush and loosen it up. So then everything kind of ties together. So that's how you fix mistakes. You tie everything together just like that. But you see how kind of crinkled and fun this looks? So as I've pulled out that black, I've got that nice pink smoky effect. And if you see my house, everything is pink, black and white. So you'll know that this is my color scheme. But you also get all those beautiful ripples and effects and watermarks that you get with alcohol inks too. So I'm also just pulling those colors together. So that's how my finished piece looks. Very clean, very simple, very beautiful. And you can see you get those gorgeous effects. But when you paint with alcohol inks, it's just another effect. It's another way that you can use supplies you already have. As I say, if you don't want to be able to pull that ink out and get that watercolor effect, make sure you do heat embossing or play around with inks because not all inks are going to run together. But I use my amalgam knowing that it doesn't react fully. So I still keep those nice crisp lines, but I can also pull some of that color in to get those nice kind of charcoal -y effects in there. So we're going to pop our inks to the side over here and we're going to add a sentiment onto here. Um, but also you're going to find that some inks do not stamp well on glossy cardstock. I know amalgam does. I also know that my tonic heat embossing does as well. So you can see there how that looks. And we'll grab our stamp set off the floor because that's not where we went to put it. So I'm going to go with um, Why Fit In When You Were Born To Stand Out, which I think is a really nice sentiment. Again, we'll grab our Misty with our nice sticky grid in here. So the reason I use sticky grid is that it means I don't have to use magnets, which I really like. So again, we can pop this in here, stick it down.
and line up our sentiment. Press. Again, you could heat emboss or you could just go with your black ink. So I'm going to do black ink and I'll stamp it twice so that I get a nice crisp image. So there's one. Again, nice tap. And there's two. And just peel this off. And you can see how easy that is to peel off. It also works with vellum and delicate things. And it works with the heavier pieces as well. So it works both ways. Again, I'm just gonna give this a quick dry because I don't want anything to smudge or any of those things. Give my alcohol inks a quick dry too. And I like using this, uh, particularly with Yupo and embossing powder, um, uh, glossy card stuff because whilst it gets to a really nice high heat, the airflow isn't too hard that's going to make your paper bubble and things like that. So this is the Ranger Heat It Tool and I find that this works really well. So let's mount everything together. So again, I'm going to grab everything from over here and I'm going to grab my tape. So I seem to have run out of my Alternew tape, so I'm just going to use uh, an alternative one. Alternew do do a really nice tape runner. It's a dotted tape runner, um, really great to use. So you can grab those from Alternew too, or I like using the Tonic Funky Tape Runner. Both work really nicely. This is my Paper Glider Bone Folder. Uh, it's just got a really nice curved end that gives you a nice crisp fold. And these are the Scrapbook.com card bases. So I'm using a piece of black velvet matting cardstock. If you watch my videos, you'll know I use this all the time. Just gives you a nice professional finish to your cards. This piece is four inches by uh, five and a quarter. And then if you line up three, your fourth will automatically be perfect, assuming you've cut it straight. And I like using the Tim Holtz trimmer. Press that down. And then let's just check that our sentiments dry it is again. Same again here. And then for embellishment, Altenew do um, enamel dots, so you could use those. I happen to have grabbed some of my Nouveau Jewel dots. And the reason I grabbed those is they're a little bit translucent. So I think they're just gonna add a nice delicate finish to this. And again, you'll notice I'm matting with my card open. Even though I had a nice crisp fold here from using my bone folder, it still has a little bit of bounce and that means you don't get a perfect mat. Whereas if I mat it with my card open, you can see it lays nice and straight and I can get something nice and smooth. So I'm grabbing here the Rosewater Jewel Drops. I like to pipe off to the side just to make sure I don't have um, any air and things in there. And I do have videos on how to get perfect Nouveau Drops and to be able to make them beforehand, all of those kinds of things. But I'm just gonna add one drop here. I think there's a little drop next to it. Um, I think that's going to be it actually, just very clean, very simple, but there you go. Just focusing on that technique there and you can see, I really love how that's come together. Great technique, as I say, if you don't want to be able to add those extra details in, just go ahead and do some heat embossing, play around with different inks. You'll find each one reacts slightly differently as well. Um, dye inks won't react because they don't have any alcohol in them, but you may struggle to get some of them to dry on your glossy cardstocks because of the porousness and things. So just play around. Heat embossing is always a safe way to go too. So thank you so much for joining me here at Hedgehog Collar. Don't forget to check out that Instagram hop uh, at the Hedgehog Collar on Instagram or instagram.com slash hedgehog, the Hedgehog Collar. Links will be in the video description and there's lots of prizes and inspiration for you along the way as well. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to the channel or you do not already subscribe, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell and hit that join button as well. There's lots of reasons to join, including saving on all your crafty purchases, a birthday card from Hedgehog Collar and early access to our content plus joining our community as well. Thank you again for joining us. I'll see you again tomorrow with another tip, trick, tutorial, or maybe something else as well. In the meantime, happy crafting and have a great day. Bye.